What's good, YouTube? It's your girl, Asia. And it's your boy, BJ. And, and we, we back, back like, like we never, never left. left. Appreciate y'all for tuning in, pulling back up. Um, we're going to be jumping into a new movie today. It's titled The Talented Mr. Ripley. Yes. Yes, y'all. Excited to get into this one. This is definitely one I have never seen before. I've not heard Same. of it, actually. One of our VIP patrons put us on to this. So, Absolutely. shout out to the fam. Thank you so much for this request. And also supporting Asia and BJ as well. Happy New Year as well. I should say that also. It's still like Absolutely. Happy New Year. Absolutely. Right? And, and Mr. <laughs> Ripley, like, like we went to the Wax Museum. And it's all like Mr. Ripley's like the wild and crazy thing. So, yeah. Yeah, I, don't know if this, I don't know if this has anything to do with... Mr. Ripley, like yeah. the actual Mr. Ripley. It actually gave so, me like that vibe. Though. Like, I'm not really sure. For some reason, as soon as I saw that name, that's what it made me think of was the mm -hmm. Wax Museum. So curious to know, like, if this has anything to do with with Mr. Ripley's Wax Museum. If you've not been there, y'all, I would tell y'all to go there. But I don't know if this has anything to do with that. But I'm just saying, if you never went just what I'm saying. to yep. Mr. Ripley's Wax Museum, you're missing out. Okay, especially with the kids, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. So, uh, other than that. Make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe, smash the notification bell so you don't miss any videos from Asia and BJ. Y'all can tap into the Patreon to check out all of our unedited, uncut videos, behind the scenes footage, Patreon polls, and access to all of our TV series as well. And shoot, now you can join Patreon for free actually now. So, you know, y'all better go over there because sometimes y'all be missing out too. I'm just saying. So. All you gotta do is subscribe. That's yeah, it. Hit that button. <laughs> All that to say, let's go ahead and jump into this video. You ready? Let's go. Let's get it. Oh, yeah. Matt Damon. Yeah, that's it. It's in this one. I did see that on the cover. We're at Princeton. Most likely you'll know our son, Dick. Dickie Greenleaf. I couldn't help noticing your jacket. Yes. Class of 56. 56. That's my son's talent, spending his allowance. Could you ever conceive of going to Italy, Tom? Persuade my son to come home? I'd pay you a thousand dollars. A day? Uh, a week? Right. How long you think I'm gonna be there? Attenzione. <laughs> Just one suitcase, Signor Ripley. Si. So he's Mr. Ripley. Yes. Meredith Randall. Um, Dickie Greenleaf. Hello. No, he's not Mr. Ripley. He is. He uses Dickie's name. My father wants me back in New York. He builds boats. I'd rather sail them. So I travel under my mother's name. Which is... Emily. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so what's his name? He's Ripley. Dickie Greenleaf is who, is who he came to come get. Green Greenleaf. Yeah. He's he is Ripley. Mm-hmm. Okay. His first name is Don. I guess he was just using Dickie. I guess he was just name dropping using that Greenleaf name. He probably looking around trying to see like, okay, this is why Dickie don't want to go home. He need, he need to subtract the shoes. <laughs> there you go. Dickie Greenleaf? Who's that? It's Tom. Tom Ripley. Tom Ripley? We were at Princeton together. Okay. Did we know each other? Hello. Uh, well, I knew you, so I suppose you must have known me. Princeton's like a fog. <laughs> Coincidence. Coincidence. I don't remember this. <laughs> That's so funny. Okay, okay. Princeton was such a fog. He seemed to be a little full of himself. Huh? Hold on. See, I, I knew it. Play up, play up, play up, play up. He he got that Playboy look to him just in general. Tom Ripley's here. Who? Uh, who? Tom. Yeah, Tom. Tom. <laughs> oh, so he saw him. Everybody should have one talent. He did, yeah. What's yours? Forging signatures. Uh, telling lies. Impersonating practically anybody. That's three. 
Nobody should have more than one talent. Hmm. The only talent my son has is for cashing his allowance. <laughs> That's his daddy. Meet my father, Herbert Richard Greenleaf the first. <laughs> Pleasure to meet you. Uh, Dickie's made a fine catch. Uncanny. I know Emily thinks so. I don't get it's it. It's uncanny. Could you ever conceive of going to Italy, Tom, and uh, bringing him back? What? I'd pay you <laughs> if you would go to Italy, persuade my son to come home. I'd pay you a thousand dollars. He's like, huh? What? Wait, huh? Tell him wild horses would drag me back to him or his shipyard. <laughs> now that you're a double agent and we're gonna string my dad along. What if we were to buy a car with your expense money? Okay. <laughs> what do you think? A little cinquecento of my dad's money. Oh, please, Dickie, you can't even drive a car. Who is she? She looks familiar. That's uh, Gwyneth Paltrow. So, what, is he gonna move in with you? It'll just be for a little while. He can be, he makes me laugh. Okay, darling. Promise you'd say? No, I like him. March, you like everybody. Yeah, I made him a best friend. <laughs> a little snooping, eh? Marge, you like everybody. <laughs> Marge, Margie, yes. unbelievable. Tom can't ski either. I can't either. Don't feel bad, Tom. <laughs> I've never been skiing. <laughs> She like she look she look like right around the corner. Change a hair for me. Oh, that's him singing. Each day is Valentine. No way he really singing. <laughs> that can't be him singing. You are lying. I, <laughs> I always enjoy that song, though. Now your signature. Not Dickie. Your signature. So he just had him write a postcard to his dad. Do you have any brothers? No. No brothers, no sisters. Wait. Me neither. Is he in his house? Or Babe. I think they take this to a different level. I'm not... I'm not gonna play with you in the tub. Chess is a very relaxing game. I'm cold. Can I get in? Hell no. I didn't mean with you in it. Or did you? Get in. I'm like a prune anyway. I'm definitely not getting in when he just got out the water. I need Fred. You like snap out of it. I hope Freddie made a reservation. Freddie? Freddie. Freddie's organizing the Cortina skiing trip. Huh? Oh, here he is. Look at look at all the birds. Uh, oh yeah, 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 right. Oh, he pulled up in style too. You look gorgeous. As always. <laughs> oh. So, mangiare. Oh gosh. See, I got the table outside of Fabrizio's. Tommy. Outstanding. I tell you, I'm so cabin crazy with Manja. I know, I was there. Send me here, does he seem like tipsy? <laughs> when he walked up? Yeah. Or is he just like that? <laughs> Very flamboyant. Yeah. May I? What are you doing? Oh. oh. I was just amusing myself. Sorry. I wish you'd get out of my clothes. Do you have my shoes on too? You said I could pick out a jacket, so... Did you get undressed in your own? 
thought you missed the train. Freddy drove me back in his car. Is Freddy here? He's downstairs. I was just fooling around. Was he fooling around or, or was it he? When you have his attention, you feel like you're the only person in the world. That's why everybody loves him. It's always the same. Whenever someone new comes into his life, Freddy, Fausto, Peter Smith Kingsley, he's wonderful. Have you met him? Especially you. No. No. That's just the boys. Huh? That's just the boys. At least stick around for the festival of the Madonna. The whole town comes out. I, I don't think so. I have my own uh, Madonna back in Rome. Why don't you come back with me? A lot of ladies. Uh, right in front of her. <laughs> right in front of her. Freddie, Freddie might not be a good influence. I started to see that. <laughs> Tommy. How's the peeping? <laughs> <laughs> Tommy. Come on, Tommy. <laughs> Tommy, 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 Tommy. <laughs> See, he don't like Freddy. I don't think he liked Freddy from the first time he saw him. There go his uh, side chick. Is that the, that's the lady? Yeah, that's the old girl with the short hair. Oh my gosh. Oh. Look, and he don't even seem like he even, even care. Like, say something. Maybe she did that because she saw him with her, with Marjorie. Like one of the last times he saw her, he wanted to, she wanted to talk to him. How can it take an hour to find an ambulance? She was already dead, darling, wasn't she? So I suppose. I don't know why people say this country's civilized. Dickie. It isn't, it's fucking primitive. I don't think Marjorie has a clue. I don't think she does either. You don't have to clean up! Really? Don't be yelling at me. She was pregnant, did you know that? Damn. Oh. That, that, that. How did he know? She came to me for help. She needed money. I didn't help. Didn't help. Now she's drowned herself, and it's my fault. It wasn't his baby, I suppose. No, I think it was his. I'm sick of Manji, especially now with everything. He just gonna leave her like that? Is, is, is Manji the girl? Margie, I think he... Uh, is I he saying he somebody Margie. else? No, I think he was referring to Margie. He said Manji. Manji. Margie. Okay. I see what type of time he on. The way she cared for him like that, and he just saw about leaving her. Okay. I don't. <laughs> Why do you do that thing with your neck? <laughs> what thing? I think Tom got a crush on him. For sure. Even from when they were at the, um, like the bathtub scene. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was weird. Did I know you were Princeton, Tom? I don't think I did, did I? Why are you asking all of a sudden? No reason. Because you're leaving, I guess. I don't think you were there. <laughs> Do you even like jazz? Or is that for my benefit? I've got to like it. Oh, yes! I've got to like everything about the way you live. Mm. I'm gonna run a boat tomorrow. Take a look around. This is how I found my place in Margie. 
Oh, and mind you, that's a place. That's the place. Marge and I are getting married. How? How? Yesterday, you're ogling girls on the terrace. If today, you're getting married? That's absurd. I love Marge. You love me. You're not marrying me. Tom, I don't love you. No, I, I don't mean that as a threat. To be honest, I'm, I'm a little relieved you're going. I think we've seen enough of each other for a while. Wow. What? You can be a leech. Oh. Did he say the wrong thing? I'm... That's the wrong thing out there on the boat in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> you can be quite boring. Uh -oh. Damn. I've been absolutely honest with you about my feelings. Boring. But you, first of all, I know there's something. That evening when we played chess, for instance, it was obvious. What evening? Oh, sure, no, no. It's too dangerous for you to take on. Mm. You, you want to play the sax? You want to play the drums? Which is it, Dickie? What do you actually play? Oh. No, no, see? The wrong. The wrong. I can't move without you. Doubt. Oh, whoa! God, so oh, 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 God! Oh, snap, babe. Okay. Oh. About to happen. I didn't think it would, it would go from zero to a hundred. Oh like, no, now he's about to pull a Dexter. <laughs> Slice of life, babe. What is he gonna do with him? Oh my gosh, babe. No way. Look, he just laying there with him. This whole Italy trip and turned upside down. I can't believe he did that. I did not see that coming. I can't believe Dickie just, just went off on him like that. I feel like he was in love with him. Yes. And 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 Dickie didn't, wasn't like. It wasn't reciprocated. Right. And so when he started talking all kind of crazy. Especially when he started calling him boring and calling him like a leech. Yeah. Man. He should have been back home, but. I did not see that coming at all. He did say he was good at forging people's signatures. That he did. And impersonating people. Where's Dickie? <laughs> I think he's planning on staying in Rome for a few days. Rome? Huh. Did he say why? I don't understand Dickie. So. He was thinking of you. He asked me to deliver this. Mm. Aaron number one, deliver Marge's perfume. Aaron number two, uh, pack some clothes and his precious saxophone. Well, how long is he sick for? Search me. I guess we're abandoned. <laughs> oh, man. He in a big, big box of trouble. <laughs> I don't know how he gonna get away with this. There was a letter from Dickie in with my perfume. Oh, she read it. I just think I should come with you to Rome and confront him. See? That's not possible. Yeah, pull out a cigarette. That, that. <laughs> so what, are they gonna go to Rome? Your dream, dear. Mm. Of course, welcome back. Oh, man. Signature. That's pretty dead on. Oh, hell. Remember her? Oh, yeah. She might be the one thing that's going to get him caught up walking around calling him Dickie. Really like this, too. Well, I think I'm having that, too. Oh, that's nice. 
a doppio petto, come questo. Sì. Grazie. Arrivederci. Arrivederci. Ciao. 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 Take 10 paces and turn around. <laughs> hey, we gotta go to the opera. <laughs> we do right. One time in life. We missing out. Oh, wow, look at that. Uh, how they do? Wow. Look at. Wonder what that's making him think of. No, but no, but the opera had you crying for real though. Did you know that? Yeah. We hear you're a friend of Freddy's. He has I hate opera tattooed on his chest. Well, there's room for a whole libretto on Freddy's chest. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's gonna be Freddy that's gonna get them caught up. You think so? Yeah. Cause he know that that's not Fre Freddy gonna see him and be like, you're not. Oh, you're not Dicky. Tom. March. Oh, hell. How are you? Lord what, Jesus. What, what are you doing in Rome? Is he here? Are you with Dickie? No. Um, no. Oh. Um, hello. Um, I'm Tom Ripley. Peter Smith Kingsley. That's the, um... Uh... Oh, look, there's Meredith. The Where's he hiding Meredith. Dickie? What's her name, Marge? The, uh, the tech star. He's in a pickle. Do you know Cafe Donnelli uh, at, at the Piazza di Spagna? Mm -hmm. I, I know the Piazza di Spagna. What more time? 10.30? We'll be there. Okay. So we'll see you in the morning, March. 10.30? Very nice to meet you. And you. Come on. That March looks... Yeah. She confused. I, I think she feeling something wrong. They almost blew up his little spot. Yeah, cuz see. Let's go. Oh, I thought you were enjoying <laughs> yourself. He gonna get caught up. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. He gonna get caught. <laughs> if he if he keep on doing what he doing. So will you meet me tomorrow? Just to say goodbye, properly, you know, in the daylight, so it's not just this. Of course, Meredith. I'm sorry. Of course, I'll meet you. You should always save pain for daylight. Why don't we have coffee in the morning at Danelli's? At Danelli's. Uh -oh. So I'm gonna be careful how he's playing this whole thing right now. Mm -hmm. I don't know, babe. Look, look, look. <laughs> look. <laughs> Isn't that surreal? That's crazy. We're That's the right same. There. Well, do join us, won't you? We're just waiting for a friend. I... I won't, actually. I think this... Did we see you at the opera last night? Uh, you waiting for Dickie? Uh... Dickie loves you. He's... I think you'll find he's on his way home to you. Well, how, how would you know that? He told me everything. No, I was supposed to uh, meet him 15 minutes ago, so uh, I'm going to go now, I think. That's why he wanted them all to meet there at the Cafe Dinelli. Yeah. Because he thought that they would, they would see each other, I suppose. I think I'm going back to Margie. I think Dickie's coming home. I'm going home. Really? Uh, well, that's just swell. Well, I, I, you know, you're, you're way ahead of me. Great. You know, that was rather moving when Meredith... I'm sorry, uh, Meredith is the American girl I saw at the opera last night. She's been seeing something of Dickie. Oh, my God. But the point is, Dickie, and we all know this, Dickie loves Marge. And he misses her. Shoot, Dickie loved Dickie. I thought she was going to come back and be like, <laughs> well, one more thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, why he was sitting at the table. Oh, that would have been bad. So I don't like them kind of statues in the house. Mm -mm. Not that. Like somebody watching you all the time. Dickie. Is that Freddy? Dickie, come on, it's me. Oh, it is. What happened at Christmas? 
What about Christmas? You supposed to come skiing? And get a uh, cable or a call or a little note or a, you know, frankly, a card. Freddy cannot see that ring. It's a new piano. Probably shouldn't. Sounds out of tune. Probably shouldn't. Uh... Uh oh. Did this place come furnished? Like it doesn't look like Dickie. So. Why are you asking all these it's questions? Really horrible, <laughs> isn't it? Cause I don't think Freddy crazy. Oh, that's a. Uh, you should mop, watch that. Excuse, excuse me. Oh yeah, Freddy not crazy. He know. He know what's up. Emmanuel Fuercado, que está de tutto giorno a sonar. Blah 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 blah. Ciao, Dicky. Uh oh. Dickie doesn't play the piano. Oh, is he coming back up? Oh! No way. I got him too. A piece of his skull. Okay. Cause you know he, you, you know he didn't like Freddy at all. Anyways. No. But top, but top, but top. Okay. Yeah, Tommy kind of crazy. You can see my other friends. Uh, what can you do? Yes. Drunk dead. <laughs> hey, if I'm drunk, think what her husband's saying. <laughs> he was impersonating Freddy. Oh, man, he done straight dumped Freddy. Where he done dumped him, I don't know. La polizia. Oh. Vicky Greenleaf? Yes. Inspector Roberini. Can we come in? He let himself in. Who found him? I sent up. Uh, you understand, I must ask you to stay in Rome, Signor Greenleaf. Yes, if, if it's going to help, certainly. At some point, I think all fingers going to point back at Tom. Uh -huh. Some kind of way. What happened to your face? My scooter, I fell off. Getting chased by photographers. The telephone, the press, I'm, I'm feeling hounded. Do you think you could not give out my address? Look at all these police officers that are here. Oh, man. Reporters. Here is a pattern. Two days ago, Freddie Miles is dead. He leaves your apartment and is murdered. Yesterday, a little boat is found in San Remo. Oh. And the owner tells the police it was stolen on November 7th. We look at hotel records and we see Dickie Greenleaf is staying in San Remo. C'è la signorina Sherwood. Marge Sherwood. Uh, that is Miss Sherwood now. Uh oh. I have a witness who thinks they saw two men getting into Mr. Miles' car. And she wants to identify you in a um, confronto lineup. Tomorrow then? Uh, tomorrow. <laughs> a lineup? This is turning into a, a, a trip from hell. He's so busted. Whatever it is you've done or haven't done. You've broken my heart. He can't kill her, too. Don't open the door and take her out. You've always understood what's at the heart of me, Tom. Marge never could. I suppose that's why I'm writing this to you. The brother I never had. Hmm. The brother. Oh, no. They're already there. See? Man, he gotta get out of Rome. I'm delighted, contrary to rumor, that you're still in one piece. What rumor? Oh, you know that Dickie murdered you and is traveling under your passport. I know. It's ridiculous. Wow. See how fast word spread? I'm still super surprised that he's still free. I don't know how he done got away with this. Dickie's letter. Do you believe it? I don't know what to believe. Hmm. <laughs> Dickie hasn't killed himself, I'm sure of that. There's a private detective on the case now. Uh, oh. 
He's already discovered that Dickie cash checks for $1,000 the day before he disappeared. Senora? Is that what you do before you jump into the Tiber? I don't think so. They gonna see that that's not him. We'll have to tell Mr. Greenleaf how far his dollar stretched. <laughs> I was just thinking about when Tom first came to Montrebello. And look at you now. Look at me what? To the manor board. Uh-oh. I was about to say, just for a little slight second. No, I think she, she owned to it, too. <laughs> you have Dickie's rings. She found the damn rings. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What is she doing? Oh, I thought that was a razor. Marge. Oh. Uh. He has so many realities, Dickie, and he believes them all. He not, he's not gonna do this. Babe. Let me hold you. <laughs> Marge? Thank God. What's going on? Get me out of here, get me out of here. Please. Tommy, you're okay. Get me out of here. You try. You try talking to her. I, what did I ever do? Listen, I've heard listen, tell you one listen. thing that I've ever done to her. Listen, you can't be angry with her. She's confused and she needs someone to blame. So she blames you. I'll go back home and talk to her. Oh, oh man, it was so close, so close. I, I, he need. It. Oh man. You how you heard how he was talking and how he, how he's explaining everything. There's female intuition and then there are. Mr. McCarran needs to talk to you. Oh, there's no need. We could go to the bar. There's no need. No, no. Look at that look she gave him. I found these in the basement of Dickie's apartment. They belong to Freddie's car. Mr. Greenleaf has asked me to lose these in the canal this evening. Mr. Greenleaf feels that there was a silent promise in Dickie's letter to you, which he intends to honor. He also intends to transfer a good portion of Dickie's income from his trust into your name. What? That's crazy. Are you so are I put not... all that money. Dickie? Uh-oh. Uh-oh, not again. <laughs> oh, my God. <sighs> Hello, Meredith. Damn, Meredith. Are you alone? Oh, hardly. Couldn't be less alone. Aunt Joan. And Co. A lot of Co. Uh-oh. Oh, he, this is it. Listen, I can't talk now. Um, later? Later. about to get caught. Dickie, are you with Peter Smith Kingsley? I, I bet you are. My aunt thought she saw him. Uh-oh. Oh. Was that Meredith? Was who Meredith? Meredith Logue. You were kissing someone that looked like Meredith. Uh-oh. Just tell me some nice things. <sighs> no, Tom Ripley. Good things about Tom Ripley. Hmm. Did it. <sighs> wow. He got away with it. Yo. He got away with it. So Dickie's dad transferred like his trust and gave it to Tom. Right. 
I thought I thought Meredith was, Meredith was her name, right? Yes. I thought she was gonna like say that she saw him or that he was there or that they were gonna find him on the boat dead and then like he got away with it. Well, Meredith was the other lady, but you're talking about uh. Yeah, but Margie? she. No, Meredith, the one that was on the on the ship with him. Okay. Because she thought that he was Dicky. Mm-hmm. She thought that he was Dicky. Uh, but she but she, but she didn't know him as anybody else because when she met him. He introduced himself as Dickie. As so. Dickie, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. But I thought at some point, like, because everybody, some people were like, no, Tom, hi, Tom. And then you saw how Marge was acting. Marge obviously knows him as Tom. They were at the same place at the same time. And I thought at some point he was literally going to get caught because somebody was going to say, no, his name is not Dickie. Not his Dickie. name is That's Tom. Tom. Yeah, man. and then when he's even... When he brought up like the, the, that the father had uh, hired a private investigator. Look, he more than mi- talented Mr. Ripley, okay? He talented Absolutely. in multiple ways. Because one, he can, he, he, he can do the voice. He can forge signatures. I thought that was strange that he said that when he said it. Yeah, and, and, <laughs> ev- and, e- and even, um, you know, even his friend would bring that up too. Like, Dickie would even say that. He's like, you're actually, like, really talented. Yeah. You know? And when he started saying it, it, it didn't really dawn on me when, when he said it early on about, like, him impersonating, even, like, when he impersonated his dad and he and he wanted um, Margie to see him, like, impersonate his dad. He was like, isn't it, like, remarkable that he can, he actually sounds like my dad. Yeah. And he said it, like, line for line as far as everything that he said. And... These were the talents that he needed to kind of like get get himself into into this situation, and he also had to use these these same type of talents to get himself out, out of, of this it. whole thing too as well. And he covered all the bases because remember he was calling the hotel and leaving messages, and then right, Tom was calling him back and then leaving him messages. So it and was writing like the was, letters and stuff. Yeah, that, he covered that, all that, his bases. That's where he got it when he was sending the letters to Margie because. Because well, that's how he was able to keep it going for like so long, because she was in a completely different place. So when when they all like were in Rome and and and, and Meredith was, was was with him, and they was at the opera house, yeah, and he was like, "We gotta go," because Margie was you, there just as well, up. yeah. That's yeah. where that's where the talent had to kick in to like really like play. Two different people be two different people at one time. At one time, yeah. Oh, talk about being a slick Rick, okay? Because I thought my initial thought of him too, like I'm like, oh, a nice, he's a nice guy to go try to send for him to go get his son. Like he probably could do it if anybody else was able to do it. Mm-hmm. But to me, I feel like he was, he was like jealous, low key, like of of that son. Like it was like Dickie. he wanted him to love, yeah, of Dicky. Which is why he killed him because he obviously I feel like he wanted what he had number one in terms of like the wealth because you saw how much he was just throwing it out there. You heard how the daddy was making reference and how he was just spending up money and stuff Buying like that. Stuff left and right. Yeah. Back. So when he went there and he I I feel like he was hoping to get a relationship out of Dicky and they were gonna be together and that was gonna be that, you yeah, know. He, yeah, he was falling for Dicky. Yeah, you know. So to me, I'm like, I I feel like that was his motive the entire time. Like, I don't know if killing him was not a part of the plan. Killing him wasn't a part of the plan. I feel like he was gonna do that. No, I don't think that he was gonna do it. What drove him to kill him is is the way that Dicky was treating him because. <sighs> Like, like Dickie, because he was in love with him. Because Dicky was very charismatic. Like everybody that he came across, everybody just like revered him. Like everybody fell in love with him. Yeah. Even when you saw when people greeted him, even with uh, Salvana, the, the the lady that ended up drowning herself. Yeah. Like, even her, like, like, like he didn't give her the time of day because he was, you know, she was like, I need to talk to you, and he was mm-hmm. like, and he kept going, you know, and he continued on about his day. Yeah. So I, I felt like he was just like. Like like a magnet, like everybody just kind of like magnetized to him. So, you know, with Tom going going to meet him, like like Tom didn't think that all all of this would happen with him like catching feelings for Dicky the way that he did. And and the way that you saw that was like the tub scene when it was playing chess. That's when you was like to look like like he's like he's really falling 
Okay. For Dicky. Yeah, because that was a bit. That was yeah. That was a little much. Yeah. <laughs> when I read the tub, I, and, I had forgot about that part before. Yeah. I said I think he has a crush on him. Mm-hmm. Like I think he crushing for real. Mm-hmm. But then even Marjorie said, you know, the way like what. What's great about Dicky is that he he has the ability to pull you in. Like he makes you feel like you're the only person in the world mm-hmm. when he's talking to you and when, when he's, he's dealing you. with you. Yeah. And then when he's not dealing with you, then he forgets about you, mm-hmm. basically. And that's kind of how he how how that's kind of what he saw when him and Freddie were on the boat, and you saw how how Tom was acting when he was down <laughs> at the bottom of the boat with Margie to kind of you know for for Margie time. Yeah. And then with with Tom, yeah 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 yeah. But and, but 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 he thought that it, that he might like him because the way that he was acting towards Freddie. So he was like, maybe he is like that. Maybe he maybe he does like guys. Yeah, and and Freddie Freddie was the Freddie was about to like take it all because he knew it. He figured it out he was faster the first than one. everybody. Yeah, yeah, he was the one who figured it out. But yeah, I, I I just knew they were gonna catch him. I, I'm like, there's no so way too. he's gonna wiggle his way out of this, and all the way to the end. Especially like when the investigators when they came to the hotel, yeah. and they had him in there. Like I'm like, they're gonna find a way to piece all of this together. Some DNA, some blood, some video cameras, like some, something, something somewhere. Because, like, oh, well, even when he said that he cashed that money, that's why I was like, oh. Then, then there you go, you know, like, and Marjorie started, I think Marjorie started figuring it out too, because she like, I'm just trying to think when you first came here, how, how you were, like, you didn't really have nothing. Now you don't came up. It don't even seem like you've been here that long. And all of a sudden now you don't came up. You got your own you got the hotel. Yeah. You used to have the hotel. <laughs> yeah. You hanging out at the opera. Right. Like, like yeah. all of these different things, mm-hmm. impersonating Dickie mm-hmm. for the most part. <laughs> so, yeah, y'all, this was the talented Mr. Ripley it has absolutely nothing to do with Mr. Ripley and the Wax <laughs> Museum, <laughs> like we that. were talking about earlier. But yeah, I, I just enjoy like everything in the movie, like the, just the, just the nostalgic how yeah. they were like in Italy, yeah, the Spanish steps, like yeah. like all of these like nice places in Italy that we saw like Rome, right. And, it kind of like brought back some of those little fuzzy memories. That was actually even really with the cool. lemons. Remember yeah. the trees? Yeah, like, they had lemons in like all the trees. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I do, I do. So yeah, this was actually really fun to watch. The jazz, and music. I enjoyed it. Like the the suspense in this. Like I thought they were gonna catch him. Like I knew it, especially when the dad showed up. But. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. y'all tap in. Let us know what y'all think about this down in the comment section. And if y'all enjoyed it, give us a big thumbs up. Like, comment, subscribe. Smash the notification bell so you don't miss any videos from Asia and BJ. And if ain't nobody else told you, Absolutely. I love you. And we're going to see y'all in the next video. Yeah. Absolutely, y'all. Yeah. Peace and blessings. Y'all Bye. take it.